So Apple kind of dropped a big one on us today. That is for sure. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Woody. I make a lot of content about virtual experiences and I show people how to make them inside Unreal Engine. This just feels like one of those moments where things are breaking the mold a little bit. I've had my experiences with VR. I built a little bit of a game demo last year. I've spent more than a little time actually trying to use these platforms to be able to make stuff. So when a company as large as Apple comes along and says, hello, we're going to make a headset. Suddenly that's interesting for everybody in this space. So let's talk about it. Here's the front page of Apple.com right now. If you haven't watched the keynote, you can go back. You could see the whole thing. It's great. It's really cool. One of the things I want to note is that we have a new tab at the top of Apple.com, and that is a big deal. When you get a new tab from Apple, something has changed significantly. So let's click it. Here it is. Here's the Vision Pro. I got to say, um, off the bat, my design instinct here is that like Meta is actually a little bit ahead in terms of making things likable. This looks so sci-fi to me and like it just uh, feels a little cold off the start. Here's your your image. This is the image you're going to be seeing everywhere. Apple Vision Pro seamlessly blends digital content with your physical spaces. So that was a big thing. So Tim talked specifically about how much he likes AR content and how AR content plays a big factor in creating the new Apple Vision Pro. I'm getting having to get used to saying it. And I think that's a strong move. One thing they showed off in the demo was just how they plan on using machine learning with hands to be able to just do actions based on that. Kind of like the hand sensor I'm using now, which is using machine learning to be able to animate my hands. It's a super cool technology, and I'm glad that's finally here and Apple's just boldly going controllerless, and that's awesome. I think it looks super neat. At the end of the day, people are going to be like, how much does this cost? And it costs $3,500. So... Let's talk about the good and the bad here. The hardware and internal software looks incredible. If it's Apple and it's at their level of quality that they make things, because remember, they make things like extremely high resolution screens and extremely good ergonomic input technology. This thing will be a lot of fun to use, like it will just feel great. The only thing about this that doesn't feel like extremely Apple is the dangling battery pack thing which is kind of the weirdest design choice I feel like I've ever seen them make. And I bet your bottom dollar that when we get to the Vision Pro 2 or whatever they're going to call it, it's all going to just be in the headset. But you got to remember, they make iPhones. They make really small computers. That's totally normal for them. The thing, honestly, the big problem here that bums me out is just the lack of any sort of software innovation at all inside this thing. The biggest thing we saw at WWDC was people expanding 2D screens and scenes in an AR space. And that's just a huge bummer. There's all this stuff that you can do in 3D, in a 3D physical scene, in a physical 3D world, and it's amazing. I've been playing with this stuff for years now, and it's just incredible what you can get into, even if you're jumping in something that doesn't immediately look flashy like VR chat. The immersive power of these spaces is really, really neat. I will say this seems like the first time anyone's really tried to go this high end and this accessible with an AR pass through platform. We've seen Meta do quite a bit with it, especially with the Quest Pro that came out last year. They obviously really care about that space, but there's there's no way it stacks to something as good as what we're seeing coming out of Apple. But at the end of the day, all of this stuff, it's it's a software level platform. You got to have good software to go with this. This was kind of like watching a demo where someone was like, oh, yeah, Steam VR is here. Look at this. This is Steam VR. And then they proceeded just to show you the home world that exists when you get into Steam VR. And they showed you how you could like access your desktop and do other menus. The iPhone was really cool because it did a lot of things that an iPod could do, but it needed apps. It needed serious apps like I'm going to say it Angry Birds, like it needed Angry Birds for it to be a viable platform that could do so much more than just answer phone calls, play music and surf the Internet, which is what a lot of their competitors could do at the beginning. There's a scene where a guy steps in front of a panoramic photo, I presume that he took with his iPhone in Los Angeles, and he's just looking around it 
And look, I, I get why that's cool, but also you can get Google Earth for free inside VR and you can fly around the entire world. And those two things, they're not the same. In XR Twitter, XR being extended reality, people are always grandstanding about how VR is the future or AR is the future. And this seems like a big win for the AR camp, but I feel like there were things in this demonstration that had to be frustrating even for people who are really into AR platforms. Nothing is a game, nothing like goes on a table, nothing is 3D. They did have a couple of 3D things here and they kind of acknowledged the fact that they know that there's just leagues of amazing 3D apps out there. That's the word I think they use was 3D apps, which kind of was baffling, I guess, like most developers I know do make things in 3D. I mean, one thing that I saw that was frustrating was their partnership with Unity. And I got a bias here. I have an Unreal Engine YouTube channel. We talk about Unreal Engine stuff here. And look, I've seen really great stuff come out of Unity. In fact, we just hosted a game jam for Unreal devs and Unity devs. The video just went up yesterday. But one thing that Unity doesn't do particularly well from what I've seen is create visuals that look lifelike. I should say, was not gonna be Unreal Engine, just based on uh, some proceedings that have taken place over the last three years. Everything Apple does is centered around trying to create an organic experience. And I'm hoping that whatever rendering tech is going into this thing is going to help boost these Unity projects so they look better. I would hope for the greatest level of rendering fidelity that we could get on a headset, at least on a headset that's this expensive. At one point in the show, Tim's like, welcome Disney CEO Bob Iger. And then Disney CEO Bob Iger comes out and he talks about what Disney is going to bring to the table. And I mean, look, I it, it was incredibly unclear. At one point, Mickey, Mickey Mouse jumps out from a wall where he's like a either a clock or like a poster or something. I, I've already forgotten and like dances around and it's. And that's fine, but most of it was, again, just like people looking at these digital home theater experiences. And the script he read was like incredibly boilerplate. It's like super unclear what Disney's even going to do. Like, I imagine this means you'll be able to watch Disney Plus inside the Vision Pro. But is that is that what we were looking for? Really? No. And honestly, there's already really amazing Disney experiences you can have in VR. Like if you haven't played Star Wars Rogue Squadron, it's a really cool VR game that you could play that makes you feel like you're in a TIE fighter. It makes you feel like you're in an X-Wing. And that's a Star Wars Disney property. Other thing I thought was interesting is you can do FaceTime from inside this thing. It will do a full 3D scan of your face. We saw this last year at Meta's Connect event where they displayed their high profile avatar system that 3D scans your face and creates this incredibly lifelike avatar. We could argue about whose looks better, but I think that's maybe not the point here. The fact that you can look through and see people's eyeballs is amazing. Like, it would be cool if we had that in everything in VR. They fixed a lot of problems with this. It's really cool. We need to be able to see each other while we're doing these things. We need to be able to communicate. We need to be able to not lose us. But we also need to be able to immerse ourselves completely. And I think that's my overall concern with this new product. It might be a couple years before we're finding anything from the Vision Pro that feels big. Or it could just flop. It could be that nobody buys this thing because it's the same pitch. Honestly, it's not too different than the same pitch that the general public has been already getting about VR. And that's the part that's scary to me. When Meta stock started falling last year, it was kind of a, a, a big, scary thing in the VR community because Meta bought so many companies, including Oculus. And as they started to fail, a lot of other VR stuff just started to fail. Games were canceled. When a company steps into this space and they make big moves, a lot of us get sort of swirled around the tidal wave of it. I'm going to go through a pro and con list real quick here. So the hardware looks amazing. The ergonomics look great. It looks fun to wear. It's probably the best pass through experience that we've ever seen just based on the brand. One other thing they showed was this 3D camera and I don't feel like we really learned much about it. Who knows what kind of technology is in a camera like that and what that could make possible for other things. I'm extremely interested to see how these 3D cameras work out. The controls look fantastic. If they work well, I'm sure that they will be very comfortable. And the avatar system in FaceTime is something out of a movie. It looks super cool. Cons. The focus on panoramic photos and 2D screens in general is very off-putting for anyone who understands the possibilities of this space. 
It doesn't seem like you can do anything in VR fully, as far as we know. This is absolutely going to do nothing for people who have Windows systems, and the battery pack looks pretty annoying. You're definitely not seeing anything like that coming out of Meta. The possibilities of these platforms are endless. We just need to find companies that are willing to put their whole foot in there for both AR and VR, in my opinion. Companies as big as Apple, who are charging as much as they're charging, can and should be doing both. If you're interested in learning more about virtual experiences and how to build them, you should subscribe to this channel where I make a bunch of different content in Unreal Engine mainly. Here's a couple of videos you can check out. I made a VR roguelike game last year with grappling hooks. I made a really goofy video about it where I make my dad play it and integrate it with my chat and all this stuff. We just hosted a game jam between Unreal and Unity developers where I challenged everybody to make a game inside of a three-dimensional box. 